Hey everyone, in today's video, I am not using a tripod. We're going to diagnose this brand's 2250B. Now it's got a problem. If you look right here, you'll see that the stereo indicator is not working. Now I will tell you, I have just replaced the stereo indicator with a good bulb and I know that it is good. And you may be thinking, well, do you have it switched to stereo? Yes, I do. Also, in addition to this, if we switch to FM, we get nothing out of these meters. And I do have an antenna plugged in. I'm moving this meter around in FM and we get absolutely nothing out of these meters. Same thing in AM, the signal strength meter, not a thing. So something's wrong here, and I think these things are related. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to show you how I look inside of a uh, Marantz schematic, and I'm going to try to diagnose exactly what's going on here by looking at said schematic. So I've described the issues. I've shown that there is no power going to the stereo indicator and that the FM and AM tuners appear to be uh, totally dead and non-responsive. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the schematic. This here is the schematic in the service manual for the entire receiver. It contains all boards, all switches, lights, meters, everything. So it looks kind of intimidating at first, but once you dive into it, it's really not too bad. All right, so first a few notes. Let's note that over here, we see that the selector switch is S001, and it is set to AM for uh, the input. So we'll come back out, and I know, since I've already looked, the stereo light is right here this guy right here. Two wires go into it, so let's follow those two wires. Let's start with this one right here. Let's go follow this wire. We see that this wire dumps into the uh, selector switch S01 at a certain point, and that uh, it's not happening right now, but at a certain point it'll probably get grounded to uh, pin 3 right here. So what that tells me is that this is probably the end of the circuit. We're not going to find the power by messing around with here and it makes sense that this is going to nothing right now because in AM the stereo light is always off because AM radio is never in stereo it is only in mono so let's look at the other wire you see it right here follow there and then it starts going up so let's go up here scrolling scrolling and then we have this and then we see it goes down into the stereo to mono switch right here this switch is currently in stereo based on the uh, arrows here, so we see that uh, power will definitely be coming from uh, this wire right here. So let's keep going up here. We see it goes up right there. Let's follow it. Come over here. And we see that it splits off at two points right here, and both of these wires go to the Dolby outboard. So that tells me that. Uh, you know, the stereo lights power and the uh, FM power are definitely definitely related, and that's why I decided to go for the stereo light first. Anyways, we'll keep following. And we see we've got another split right here. I know that up here, this goes to the uh, FM MPX board, P300, so we won't go up there. We'll keep going down here. And we go down. We see that this goes into a switch at a certain point. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about that because... What I see down here is this wire goes all the way down here to pin J806. Now let's take a look here. What board is this? This is the P800 power supply board. So it makes sense that we would find an issue here potentially. So now that I know that it's coming from J806, the power for the stereo light that is, and I see that it's coming right off of the emitter of this transistor here. We see that we're supposed to be getting 14 volts at J806. So that tells me that uh, H804 might be bad. However, as I look more closely at this circuit right here, I see that just at the, uh, the base of H804 is a Zener diode. Zener? Zener? I don't, I don't know. It's, uh, it's this thing right here, H810. And uh, the schematic is great because it says right here, H810 is part number WZ140. Now I know from experience that this is a half watt, 14 volt Zener diode, and that there should be 14 volts right here at this, uh, at this pin right here. 
and that's probably where the 14 volts comes from on this transistor. So I'm definitely going to pull H810 and check it to see if it's good when I'm working on the receiver. So I'll go to P800, the power supply board. That's the one with the relay you see right here. And then I'll see what happens. So what did we learn from our schematic examination? Well, we learned that J806, right in that corner there by the screw, is what gives power to the stereo indicator. We also learned that H804, this large transistor with the heat sink, is partially responsible for getting that 14 volts to it. But the main thing here is this uh, Zener diode right here, which is supposed to be pumping out 14 volts. So I'm going to take my multimeter. I've got the black pin grounded to the uh, speaker terminal ground, which is a good place when you've got it in this position. And I'm going to take the probe and I'm going to put it up to J806. And I have it there. I see that it's 0.17 volts. That's, uh, that's no good. Definitely not good. So... I could check H804, but I'm more curious about H810. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my meter up to the cathode, the one with the black line there, and I see that we have 0.7 volts at the cathode there. That's supposed to be 14, so that to me is a huge red flag, and that tells me that that is probably the problem with this receiver. So let's get to pulling some components. Take the plate off. Unplug the receiver. Flip it over. We've got it out. It's time for replacement. And lucky for me, I've got some in stock. Part number 1N5244B, 14 volt half watt Zener diode. So let's take our little uh, insulator guys here, put them on the new part, and we'll bend leads and put the new one in. We'll bend these. We'll snip our leads. Let's test this again. I need to plug it back in. Okay, so let's see if our stereo light turns on when I turn this on. Hey, would you look at that? I fixed it. We call this channel AH Fix It for a reason. Now let's see if we get any sound through the FM. My speakers are on, the volume's down. Look at that. There's sound now. Pretty cool. Let's see if AM works. It sure does. So there you have it. Zener diode, making it so that uh, you don't have a stereo light and your tuner doesn't work. So that was a pretty easy fix. That part is like a couple cents and that's why I have them around is because whenever I need one of these for a project I just buy multiple because it's so dang cheap and then when I run into stuff like this I've got it around and I can make a repair happen really quickly. So that about wraps it up for this video. This is supposed to be just a quick easy one for me to kind of go through a general uh, repair process that I use. I mean I start with uh, the problem. I think about uh, what could potentially be causing it where it might be I look at the schematic, I look for the voltages that are supposed to be there, and then I check the components to see if they have the right voltages, and then I go from there. I go and see what might be causing the voltages to be incorrect, and in this case it was a failing Zener diode right there next to the gray capacitor. Next video we'll begin really diving into this restoration. We're going to start right here with the P800 board, and I'm going to have a good video on everything you need to... Uh, properly restore a P800 power supply board on a Marantz receiver. So, with that, thank you so much for watching, thank you to all the subscribers, and I'll see you in the next video. I could have recorded that outro like this, but I've got a very distracting uh, mark on my forehead, so I'll spare you. Except I'm not sparing you. Whatever. Subscribe.